Schrodinger's equation seen here is a function of space and time and the basis of quantum mechanics. It is the product of psi with its complex conjugate that indicates the probability of a particle being at point r at time t. Schrodinger's equation is usually broken down into real and imaginary components seen here. After performing the finite difference approximations in space and time, we can get the following two equations seen here. First, the imaginary half time step is calculated for all finite space, and that is used for computing the real portion. These were the equations used in the MATLAB simulation. In order to simulate a particle moving in free space, it was necessary to specify both the real and imaginary parts in the spatial domain. The wave packet was initialized using the equations seen here. The simulation was performed using the values seen here. The wave packet was initialized with a kinetic energy of 147 electron volts. The intuition is that if the potential barrier is higher than the wave energy, then it should completely reflect. However, due to quantum tunneling, this is not always the case. The first simulation clip will show a barrier height of 3.15 electron volts, where the wave will pass completely through. The second will be a 500 electron volt barrier, which will completely reflect the wave and the third will have a height of 170 electron volts where we will see quantum tunneling. One example of quantum tunneling in a real-world application is in extremely thin transistor gate oxides. Pictured here is a diagram of direct tunneling of electrons from a p-type substrate through a gate oxide. Psi ox is the potential wall of the gate, usually described in electron volts. As transistors are becoming increasingly smaller in area A, the gate oxides need to either become increasingly thinner or have a higher dielectric constant in order to maintain the proper capacitance, as described by this equation, where k is the relative dielectric constant and t is the thickness. For IC transistors at the nanometer scale, silicon dioxide gate thickness is as small as 1.2 nanometers. As described by the equation seen here, the probability of tunneling decreases exponentially with increasing gate thickness A. V is the energy level of the barrier, while E is the kinetic energy of the wave. In this graph, we can see how leakage current density relates to gate voltage and oxide thickness. The current seems to mostly level off after exceeding some threshold voltage. Where the significant change comes in is how thick the oxide is, where we can see the results of the equation P shown previously. Here, current density decreases exponentially with increasing oxide thickness. These are the parameters for the following three simulations. Each one shows a different barrier thickness, with the first one being 25 delta x, the second 50 delta x, and the third 75 delta x. In the simulation shown previously, we would not see any difference between these thicknesses if the barrier height is constant. However, in regards to a gate oxide, the barrier thickness should cause an exponential decrease in the probability of tunneling. Now here are the simulations.
As we saw in the simulations, quantum tunneling enables electrons to pass through a barrier of higher energy when intuition would tell us it couldn't. We also confirm from the simulations that the probability of tunneling decreases exponentially with increasing gate oxide thickness. Thanks to high K dielectrics, MOSFET manufacturers are able to increase the thickness of gate dielectrics without sacrificing capacitance performance. Thanks for watching.